Hello. Um, my name is Adrian, and I am a student at Chamberlain. I'm not, I guess I am a nursing student, but I'm still taking general courses. So I don't know whether I should call myself a nursing student or just a student. Uh, but I'm, I guess I'm a student. Today, this video, I wanted to talk about my enrollment process. Um, I have been accepted to Chamberlain. So I want to talk about my enrollment process, especially now, um, being that, you know, we are in a pandemic and it's still affecting a lot of people. So I really wanted to talk about um, my experience enrolling. Um, so I applied to Chamberlain in May, um, which is so, like, the year has flown by so quickly. I can't believe it. Um, but I applied in May for the fall 2020 session. One of the things that was kind of recommended to me by the advisors when I got into contact with them was that if you want to get into Chamberlain, you should do your best to apply as soon as possible. Um, but of course, you know, before that, you have to really, you know, make sure that the school is right for you and that you know you want to go. Um, you know, when you decide that you want to do it, just, you know, apply at the best time. So that way you have really solid chances of being able to make it into every application period, like making it into the cohort because, you know, they always um, accept a certain number of students every year. Um, you know, the great thing about Chamberlain, the great thing about applying is that there are no wait lists or anything like that. Um, and there are many openings. I mean, Chamberlain has a system where the semesters are separated into sessions. And so you can literally start in September or you can start in, you know, October in the second session or which is November, consider November time. Um, and, you know, Chamberlain has school all year round, so you can do that. So for me, you know, in that time in May, we were in a pandemic. So of course, um, you know, applying to the school and really getting into contact with the advisors there, it all happened over the phone. Um, there really, I was not, I did not, you know, go to the campus or anything like that. Um, I literally just had a lot of like one-on-one -on -one phone calls and meetings with the advisors and they gave me lots of information. They answered all of my questions. A lot of the, when it came time to really start getting the ball rolling when it comes to getting information and really, um, you know, figuring out whether or not I wanted to go to the school, the advisors put together, uh, started putting together financial plans to figure out you know, how much am I actually going to pay for the school totally, you know, based on the total number of prereqs that I already have from community college, which is something I recommend doing because the school is very expensive. So there's uh, the total cost and then the total cost after financial aid, which, uh, you know, the school does provide. So so there's two prices that you really get shown in terms of the cost. Um, the school does offer, you know, financial aid and scholarships and things like that that you can take on. Um, there's also opportunities for, you know, grants and loans and all those things to help you pay for school. So I started to learn all these things. Once I started really getting into, um, you know, applying and I decided to, you know, go ahead and process my application, pay the application fee, which is like $95, which is kind of pricey. Um, I started working on my passion statement. Uh, my passion statement, uh, I already had one, you know, basically written for my other nursing school that I didn't get into. Um, so I had to take that statement and change it up according to what they wanted. Um, when you start applying to Chamberlain, you know, you're 
you know, your advisor will tell you, will basically guide you through making sure your paper is good before you submit it. So that was really nice. And then there was a lot of pre-enrollment documents um, that had to be signed. And normally, like, you would do these things in person, but obviously you can't. So a lot of it was through DocuSign. So they would send you emails, uh, you know, with electronic documents that you would sign and you would send it back to them. Um, so that's how that worked. And then I started filling out FAFSA and what else did I do? After I submitted my application, the advisor told me that the admissions committee uh, meets every Friday. And this is at my campus. I'm not sure if this is all campuses, but they meet every Friday and they kind of go down the list of applicants um, in no particular order. They go through and they select, you know, which ones get in or not. So I processed my application. I don't remember what day it was, but um, I think like a week later, that's when I ended up getting the phone call that um, I got in. And so I was really excited, really happy. Um, I was really happy to, you know, just, you know, be in and, and move forward with my education. So I got in and I got my welcome letter and things like that. Um, and then we had orientation, not orientation, but we had um, basically like class, you know, beginners seminars, like for the school. Um, we had like Zoom meetings and they were talking about just the school and welcoming us all. It was all through like Zoom or WebEx. So a little while after getting accepted, um, then we had like two like new student seminars. Um, obviously these are seminars that I guess would normally happen in person, but they happened online through like WebEx. And in these seminars, they would give us information about the school. We had different, you know, staff members and, and members of the, the faculty leadership kind of introduce themselves and who they are and uh, what they do for the school. They talked a lot about, you know, the resources we have and just, you know, being becoming a new student at Chamberlain. And finally, you know, the last thing about, you know, applying to Chamberlain, and this is something, of course, you know, every nursing school you have to do is compliance, right? You have to, you know, they set you up to get all kinds of, make sure you have like titers and your vaccine history, things like that, vaccines and stuff that you need for school, um, you know, tuberculosis and, and all of that. Um, it's a lot, it's a whole like laundry list of things you have to do, um, but you know, there is help and you do get help for it and it's pretty straightforward but it is a lot you know in my opinion i don't know but and that's something that i'm still kind of in the process of working on because um i had to get a tighter done um i had to get a tighter done and one of the requirements was for hepatitis b and i got my blood work done my titer and it came back non-immune so then I had to get all these vaccines done for hepatitis B and it's just a whole thing so yeah it's just a whole bunch of stuff and I think that's it I really don't know what else uh, to say in the future I would love to make more videos about being a student here um, I'm really excited I and based in Houston, so I do go to the Houston campus. It's my main campus. I did go to the campus for the first time a few days ago to get my ID done and my fingerprints um, processed. And campus looks really nice inside. It looks really, really nice. So it makes me really excited when we get to go back. I mean, hopefully soon, who knows? Um, people here don't want to follow the rules and yeah so which sucks but um, right now I'm currently taking some general courses I actually take my first nursing class next year and so yeah so hopefully we'll see what happens next year whether or not we'll be on campus or not 
the campus here was supposed to open, um, but of course we were, you know, of course with all the regulations, you know, wearing masks and social distancing and things like that, um, you know, they're really doing what they can to make it safe. Um, they were supposed to open this month, um, but it got canceled, I think. So I think the rest of the year, we're not going to go on campus at all. Everything is still going to remain online. So, so yeah, it really sucks. And I mean, of course, I wasn't going to be able to go on campus anyways, but still like, you know, it would have been nice to be able to go to the CAS Center, which is the, you know, student um, tutoring, whatever. But yeah, in the future, I will be making more videos, more content um, about my journey. So definitely, if you want to follow me, definitely do that. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me um, here on YouTube. Subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching.